Hello, family, friends, fans, it's C-Man, and I'm here to talk to you about the part of medical school that I'm actually involved in right now, fourth year medical school. Uh, it's pretty amazing, I have to tell you. You find that you have time for a lot more things than what you did in the first uh, thrice years of medical school. <laughs> ah, yes. Nothing like a cup of tea. It's uh, very uh, close to home. Just last week, I actually finished up taking my second step of boards. If you're not familiar with what boards are, uh, I think the title says it all. You're bored. Dear God, am I bored. Uh, no, it really, uh, there's two parts to step two for right now. Uh, I think they may be changing it in the next few years, but we'll see. Step two CK, which I took uh, yes or last week, last Wednesday, is, stands for clinical knowledge. Clinical knowledge means that it's basically like step one. Uh, step one involved that you just have to know a bunch of stuff about a bunch of stuff, and that's kind of what step uh, two CK is all about. It's basically a review of all of the third-year clerkships that you took, being the major ones, of course, internal medicine, surgery, OBGYN, pediatrics, family medicine, psychiatry, and I think, oh, neurology, and I think that may be it. There's also some selective things on there. They're not going to overlook surgical subspecialties. You will get things like your nose and throat, orthopedic, ophthalmological questions, internal medicines, subsections, you know, cardiology, GI, all that stuff's in there. And it's very much a long day. It is eight blocks of 60 minutes. And you also get, if you skip the tutorial, you get an hour break. If you don't skip the tutorial, which lasts 15 minutes, you only get 45 minute break. So skip the tutorial. If you take any type of practice questions, it's very self-explanatory. Uh, you don't need the tutorial. It's a loaded crud. Step 2 CS I took in September. CS stands for clinical skills. It also stands for I take all of your freaking money and uh, make you go somewhere in the United States you probably wouldn't want to go normally. Making it rain! Making it rain, baby! And you have to take a test. It costs 1500 I believe. $1,500 just for the test alone, not including the expense to get there, to stay somewhere. It's craziness. All you do is you run around with a bunch of sim simulated patients. I think I had 12, 12 simulated patients. Um, back to back, you get, uh, you go see, I think you go see four, then a, a, a break. Yes, yeah, four patients, then a break, four patients, then lunch, four, four patients, then you're done. I took mine in Los Angeles. Uh, I took a vacation afterward because I was like, if I'm here, I might as well. There's only five locations in the United States you can go. Uh, the ones I can remember, I think, off the top of my head are Houston, Chicago, Los Angeles, Philadelphia. And don't remember the last one. Uh, darn it. Uh, but you can look that up. I think Atlanta, maybe, but you can look it up. Anyway, waste of money, waste of time. Anyway, the point is is that you have to do those things. Other than that, though, I took all my required courses so far. In second semester, I'm kind of just cruising. I have to go in one day a week currently uh, for anesthesia. Uh, I, can't, I could go more, and I do go more, but uh, the point is that I only have to go in one day a week. Uh, and then other than that, I already took my required courses. Like I said, you can schedule some pretty easy uh, stuff. Some people have a lot of time off at certain med schools, like a couple of my buddies have three to four and one even five months off. We only have six weeks of time off. It's kind of crazy. I know one thing to watch for is to make sure uh, that your loans do not start accruing interest if you're worried about it. The point, what I'm saying is, is that basically your medical schools typically will only count your last day of classes as your last day of education so your your medical school loans begin accruing after that making it rain making it rain baby so if you're worried about that uh, you know obviously keep that in mind now of course 
I know that most of my loans are unsubsidized loans, which have already been accruing interest throughout my educational experience, and I can't do jack squat about that, whether or not I end there or not. And a month of interest is not going to make much of a dent uh, for the subsidized portion. That's a month of interest on, like, probably 15% of my loans. So anyway. The fourth year, take the time to figure out what you want to do. I suggest doing the stuff that you need to do kind of for your what you're interested in early. I also would suggest people to continue with their research because what I've done is to email basically people or programs that you've interviewed at and emailing them, talking about how you know what you're doing with research, what you're continuing to do, what you're what projects you're participating in, I think it gives them an idea that you're still willing to participate and you're still doing something to further your career while you're waiting uh, for match day. And if you're not familiar, everyone except for a few subspecialties figures out when matched or where they match on March 17th. Earlier in the week, March 13th, I believe this year, you can uh, figure out if you matched or not, you just don't know where. Okay, so like March 13th, if you go on their site, they'll say you matched or you didn't match. And at that point, you're able to either relax or start doing what's called a scramble. And that's kind of where you will basically figure out what programs didn't match any students and figure out if they want you or not. You just kind of call them and, and you work with some of your advisors and deans and even your chairman. And you can kind of hopefully figure out a place you can go. Obviously, your choices are much more limited at that point, but what can you do? Uh, you have to submit your ranking list in late February. That's when it's due. That's when the program's lists are due for their ranking list for students. If you're not sure how that works, just go to the NRMP, okay, National, Red, National Residency Match Program or whatever, .org, I believe, and you can figure out uh, where or kind of how that whole process works. They give you a calendar, they give you the explanation on the, the algorithm that goes along with it. The, basically, the point is, is if somebody ranks you, uh, like say a program has two spots to offer you, if they put you in their top two and you rank them, uh, that means that you will never get lower than where they are in your rank list. So let's say you put them at number three and you don't match in the first two places. You'll always, you'll always match to your number three spot because of where they rank you. Anyway, I just thought I'd finish with a few of the things that maybe I do during my fourth year, and I hope all of you have a great day. Well, that looks like fun. Little dusty, little dusty. Yes, little dusty. Mm. But that's okay. We play good games here. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Ah! Oh yes, I know. This issue has so many great recipes. Oh shoot, I left the camera on. Darn it. If you have any questions, remember, comment, ask, I don't care. I'll do a video on it.